Well, there's a history at Garsington of engaging with our community and um, I, I mean, I truly believe that music should be free and available to everybody and it can change people's lives. So what we're trying to do here is to inspire people um, through the creation of this opera. The idea was to start with a core of the best professional singers we could find. The professional team that puts this all together. And then we involve uh, child soloists, primary school chorus, youth choir, adult community choir. that this is our first rehearsal for the adult company and we've got a bit of a journey to go on haven't we there was initially supposed to be about 120 in this opera but when we got to the recruitment stage of each group i'm a little bit of a soft touch <laughs> i find it really difficult because i can see the journey that people go on i love working with uh, people that call themselves non-dancers and and seeing quickly how they can develop it's a lot of, oh, don't dance, don't move. But then they can, with the right encouragement, with the right tone, without being patronising. If you can speak and you can breathe, you can pretty much always sing. What's interesting about my job is finding interesting colours vocally so that people can really express something other than loud and soft and correct notes. And she's teaching people who've had no experience of even being on stage, never mind singing. She died, she did, she died of a broken rib, she did. What's the first part? Right. She died, she did, she died of a broken rib. Completely new experience, a new challenge. I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm a singer by any stretch. I've got myself who has never, ever done anything like this before. It's an incredible story as well, this opera. A real story of how a family are, are uh, uh, torn apart by the, the horrors of war. Not only the, the men that were involved in war, but the families that are left behind. And the soldiers are going to return back, I'm hoping, through the audience. What Garsington really wanted was a First World War commemoration that would have something to do with Siegfried Sassoon, because Siegfried Sassoon had had a connection with the original Garsington. He did quite a lot of writing there. We wanted to bring it into the present day as well. That meant incorporating Sassoon and his poetry into a contemporary story. Obviously, this scene is very celebratory. It's very up. It's everyone's really excited. And um, that's where Jay came into it. He served on the front line in Iraq in 2003. Basically, Jack has come back and he is not up for any of this. It's very difficult for him to be excited, to be in this street party. He doesn't want a party. Um, so Jack is a guy called Jay, who I've actually, uh, well, we've all met him. He's obviously been through quite a lot. I joined the army after a family split when I was 17. So this story kind of depicts the trials and tribulations of my dealings with Iraq and, and my family and everything that came with that. Um, certainly doesn't feel like celebrating from what he's experienced. And it gets darker, um, the music as it goes. He is bullied by his dad and then decides to join the army goes to fight in Iraq and comes back with uh, PTSD. Thing going on, and the reason you're telling off your teenagers, if I've given you that job, is because you want them to show respect and you want them to really... We wanted it to be very deeply rooted in the community itself. So we did quite a few workshops with local schools and also with the adult community chorus. And some of the ideas came from those workshops. <laughs> One little boy in the primary school who put up his hand and said what he would miss if he went away to war was the silver birch tree outside his family's house because his parents had planted it as a sapling and watched it grow up. 
And I just thought, my God, what a wonderful metaphor that is. We can use that. I don't think uh, there's a bigger range of emotion from children having a slightly cruel laugh in a playground to a really harrowing war scene. Reaching up if you're part of a group, reaching up. Redemption, forgiveness, it covers everything that there is. You've heard the boys are coming home um, and you're going to celebrate. Actually, <laughs> Separately, and this is the first time the puzzle's been put together. So can everyone go to their very, very first entrance position, please? Keep coming, keep coming, into your pairs. Straight into your pairs. We are now just about to do a run of the whole piece. I've got no idea how it's going to go. I feel apprehensive. I just, I think we're in the right place, but I won't know until we've done this run. is interesting when you're working with non-professional singers is that if you emotionally connect with what you're singing you get loads of really good singing technique for free loads She's done it. some of uh, what they're singing about like you know it's like leaving home and joining the military and that kind of thing anyway it was an adventure you, know, you don't really appreciate what's going to be in store people don't always understand the strain and stress that a military family is under actually there is always the risk of that phone call or the knock on the door I deployed several times while I was in the military, so I've left my family, I've gone away, I've come home. And it's, it's not always easy. So if you can really get people connected, your job is done. I wasn't prepared for that at all. They sung it so beautifully and with such heart and such emotion. I just burst into tears. They hit me like a train. And you can see now where you've now got to go away and look at bits you weren't sure of, but how the whole picture fits together. There's quite a lot of moments we need to find complete stillness and a reason to be completely still. But really, really fantastic work. It's first day on stage, first time they've seen any of it. It's very exciting. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit nerve wracking. It's big. Amazing. It's actually one of the biggest stages that I've danced on. Yeah, they look a little bit overwhelmed, I think. <laughs> and then my brilliant assistant, Jack Ridley, and our head of music, Susie Stranders, has been working with the, the young musicians, uh, who, the instrumentalists. So they're also getting to learn over several weeks their part. And that was also part of the process that the, the, not just the singing, but the instrumentalists can also be inspired by our professional orchestra. And uh, I mean, it's just amazing how they've integrated. I mean, I, I, I don't think uh, anybody who's sitting in the audience would think, oh, well, it's, a, it's just a youth orchestra. It's a group of musicians who are all making music together. 
it's deeply touching watching 180 people just sing their hearts out, by which I don't mean singing loudly, but, you know, really, really with feeling and passion. The Foley team from Pinewood have been fantastic to work for. I think everyone, lots of people didn't know what Foley was, me included. And Glenn, who heads up the team, his, he sort of oozes enthusiasm about Foley, making unbelievable sounds from gas canisters on a microphone sounding like a fighter jet and bolts thrown in a metal tub, which sounds like an explosion. I find it very difficult to watch the whole at this stage because all I can see is these tiny little details. So I'm there scribbling, you know, somebody's on the steps when they shouldn't be or whatever. So I haven't really sat back from this piece yet and seen it. Lots of people have said to me it's very moving and I'm really looking forward to watching on the first night. The way I see it in my head is that it's this puzzle that's created and then it's slowly placed together in, in its pieces and it becomes one. And I think the stage we're at now is everyone is telling the story together as one. Yeah, I feel really, really full of it and chuffed right now and so happy for them.